Sonic, Team Third Party. Well, no, outside of Nintendo. And Rob and Link. So we definitely got a hold it down for Team Nintendo here. Red and Blue, what do you think about this matchup? I'm thinking we're going to see a lot of projectiles, PK. Between Rob, Young Link, Mega Man, there's going to be so many opportunities for each character to get hit by just a little bit of something. Uh, it's curious to see like what gets done here. But right off the bat, we're going to see that Sonic have an unfortunate SD. Not the right way to start a match, but you can never count out anybody in this game. Blue Team could probably pick this back up if they try hard enough. No, absolutely. You're playing with a character that has a really good keep away game in Mega Man and somebody who gets absolutely in your face. So with that kind of dynamic and play. Who knows what kind of combos they could have if they are in play. But let's talk about, you know, since we have combos, Rob and Young Link, two characters that are known for their projectile game and their quick combos. Although Rob does get fair stage spiked um, over there on the right by, I think his own partner, if I saw that correctly. So really unfortunate situation. But still, between the gyro, between the boomerang, between the bomb and the arrow, and the laser as well, we have a lot of projectiles coming out from the red team that blue team needs to keep their eye on. Most uh, specifically, I'm curious to see how the Young Link and the Mega Man handle themselves. While they're both known for being really good zoning characters with their projectiles and longer reaching normals, they're really good at also being able to fight against that style of play and break zone. So for like Blue Team, Mega Man's job is gonna be able to break in on that Rob if he doesn't get killed by the Rob. <laughs> and then to also keep the Young Link at bay, that way Sonic can keep on keeping up with that classic hit and run style that Sonic's known for. Yeah, and all the characters that are on the stage, Sonic is the only one without a true projectile. Being the fastest thing alive, he does have the highest speed in the game, but his combo game is kind of kind of nerfed to how it was from Smash 4. Um, right now he has a Sonic going way too far, even using his spring, having to use his air dodge to get himself back to the stage, still doing so, but at this junction in the game, not really what you want to do, but at the same time, between considering damage and stock, the game is pretty even at the moment. And oh, a little bit less wow. even now after that young Link gets his kicks in. Come on, can commentators curse just stop being real? Nah, man. <laughs> never. Especially at a contour. You never know what you're going to see. And this Sonic is the bravest and boldest Sonic. Look at the way this man is going off, regardless of the fact that he's down on his last stock. Yeah, he is still just going way off. But again, if you show that reckless fear, that it might not be the worst thing. Where's the Rob? Oh! <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Yo, the Rob is hanging out behind the overlay. Why, why are you just down up there letting your partner get pummeled <laughs> down there? What kind of bad role? You've been programmed wrong. All right, somebody update this man's OS. Bet he's running on Linux. Or is it Linux? I don't know. I probably just got people laughing. Anyway, we have that fair. Mega Man's fairs and aerials in general just got buffed when it comes down to Ultimate. That fair is now a very Forwarder, poking so KO good. move. So Forwarder went from being like the most mediocre poking tool in Mega Man's entire kit where you only put out forward air if you messed up doing a raw bear, but now it's just as good as using bear as far as like if you want to net that kill, if you want to extend your ledge play. And we've seen it a couple of times from the Mega Man netting kills as well. And this Mega Man seems to know his stuff. He's doing a good job of comboing in his own tools, has decent awareness of where his partner Sonic wants to be, and it's trying to make a cleaner landing zone for him, but on the other side of the game, this Young Link's making it really hard for the Sonic to go anywhere without paying the price of a little bit of percentage. Yeah, that Sonic is um, definitely having to deal with it a lot, the Rob, but the thing that's saving Sonic more often than not, okay. Is that Mega Man, look at that. The neutral <laughs> are keeping him right out of defeat, but unfortunately, Rob ready to catch him. We see the share stock pretty early. That's so, yeah. how I was going to admit. That Mega Man has been doing a really good job of just holding everybody back. But the issue now is that the player who had two stocks and defending of himself has now just snatched the stock from his partner. Now they have to take care of the Rob and the Young at the same time and hope that the Mega Man can hold on. Mind you, he's been doing a good job of spacing out this entire time. So it might work out in their favor. But it's a really tough hill you have to climb. And now seeing how Blue Team is trying to take a bit of a different approach, Sonic really charging in there on Red Team. Mega Man tried to hold back, force the approach. Unfortunately, Young Link broke through. We got the 2v1 situation in Red Team's half. And PK, it's looking like a done deal as far as Game 1's concerned. Yeah, I don't imagine what Sonic can really do well against the two characters. I mean, again, he does have some great aerials, some great back airs. But the thing you're dealing with is two characters that do amazing when it comes to punishing out of shield. I mean, you don't really want to hit Young Link's shield. And wow, that amazing bait. Not enough KO. The animation lied to us again. But we are in a situation where that Sonic what do you do? You can't really play the bait and switch game because if you're not in their face, they're chucking projectiles. And if you are in their face, you have to deal with um, Young Link's sword or the quick jabs of Rob. He's doing a good job right now. Didn't manage to secure the KO from that Young Link, but can you see this going any other way? <gasps> Honestly, if the oh. Rob keeps on messing up his confirms, maybe. One good thing the Sonic player has been doing is what Sonic does best, and that's run away. Taking advantage of his superior speed, making good use of homing attack. He's ducking and diving out of a lot of dangerous situations. 
but not enough of them. That's going to be game one. Yeah, that was a really good situation, but I think what, what happened there, and that's, I believe the Sonic could have found a way to make a comeback, but the Rob played his role perfectly. He said, okay, I have too much damage. I'm going to play defense in case he gets by you. He has to go through me, and he stays in the back. Young Link, I mean, it's Young Link. He has 27,000 KO moves in his arsenal. So, Hangman, there was... Is there any other way you saw that one going in that scenario? In that scenario, no. The Sonic was starting to play things out better by the end of it. However, I feel like he needed to start playing like that earlier. He was definitely too much of a slow start as far as doubles is concerned because he forced his partner to share the stock where the Mega Man initially was playing better, admittedly. And even at that, like Sonic wanting to throw himself into the action like that, you need to know what options you're going to pick if you're going to commit to that aggressive of a start. And taking a quick look over at the uh, screen in our multi-view, it seems like Sonic is not going to be getting the run back. In fact, we're having a bit of a change of the guard on blue team. Mega Man makes the return, but Mega Man's going to be joined by Pichu this time around for game two. And this is definitely the better choice, in my opinion, for the sheer fact that you can, well, you know Pokemon Stadium, stage uh, fuel power bonus right here. But the Thunder Jolts are going to be a great pro um, projectile option for you. You have the back here. I mean, even though Pichu got nerfed in the recent patch, it's still Pichu. Like, this character still combos and KOs ridiculously Oh, early. absolutely, So bro. there's, there's no, er, no worries about that. And I think that having a smaller character that is still very fast. Look at him. He just he down tilt under the laser. That's ridiculous. This character is small, tiny, and fierce. Fear the Pichu. The more, more important part about this Pichu than anything else is going to be his own combo potential. So now he's got a much more consistent combo tree than Sonic does. And he's going to have to put it to good use. I feel like he's going to die earlier because incredibly light, the lightest in the game. And we've already seen how aggressive Red Team is with their projectiles. That Youngling already hot on the trail of trying to knock out the Pichu. But you can take advantage of all of that kill power. It's a solid balancing factor, especially while this Mega Man is still able to protect his teammates so well. But the issue, again, with this Pichu, I mean, again, not only are you protecting your partner, what? At least four stocks for stocks. All right. And they're going to go plus on it. So, all right. Not entirely a curse. Man, that was really unfortunate. But going back to what we were talking about, yes, the Mega Man is defending the Pichu. Oh! Oh! Look at that. Oh. All right. The Rob's going to come back, but oh, almost immediately off the Angel platform. This Rob's already being terrorized off the ledge. Yeah, this Rob is not going to be allowed to live. If there's, a, if there's any character that can really just annoy Rob for his big body frame, it's definitely Pichu. A character that not only it takes advantage of your. Fr Stop doing that. What are you doing? I'm so disappointed in seeing that. That's the second time where a sock was taken early by himself. P I'm Panther. He's playing well otherwise. Just don't do Thunder off stage, my dude. You're, you're not ready yet. Don't crack this during tournament. Uh, he's just getting a bit reckless. and I don't know if he can really afford to get reckless like that this deep into the bracket. Fortunately enough, though, his teammate is backing him up pretty well. And he's doing his own favors. All right, blue team sort of back in the mix here, but they gotta worry more about this Rob. The Rob now, being very aware of how dangerous things are getting, is being a bit more evasive with his pressure. I mean, do you have to worry about the Rob when the older team is killing himself? I mean, this Pichu has lost two of their own socks, but the Mega Man's only lost one. At this case, at this point, he's gonna lose all five. The Mega Man's defense is immaculate. He's playing his role, he's protecting his partner, that's great. But the partner is too reckless with his offensive options, and that's what I wanna see corrected immediately. <laughs> Somehow, the stocks are still pretty even, and the damage is in Blue Team's favor. What we need to see is for um, Panther specifically to watch how reckless he is and survive. That was a great Thunder Jolt tonight that's going to force the share, share stock. Rob losing that stock. Blue Team is now at a great advantage. BK, it's looking like we're on route for a game three, but Blue Team's got to secure the bag first if they're going to make it happen. Youngling's already proven to be a competent enough player, but he's giving up these situations a bit too freely as far as at the ledge and trying to land where he's leaving himself in free fall, and this Mega Man just keeps on picking him off for it time after time after time. And then the 2v1 situation, he really can't afford to be leaving himself in free fall like that. No, not at all. But this Pichu needs to defend his partner a little bit more. That crash bomb being really nice, trying to combo the down air from it, but I'm not even sure what happened there. The up smash didn't quite kill the, uh, the young lane. Mm. But it did kill the Mega Man, and now we you off. We got the 1v1 situation. This is, all of a sudden became incredibly doable for the Young Link. And th but at the same time, this is a very interesting matchup. We have a character that has a little bit faster projectiles at mid to close range versus somebody who optimizes himself at long range until he gets a, a bright, the right confirmed. So at this point, it just comes down to gameplay. But then you have percentage. There's almost 100% difference. With that crash bomb on him, I can't imagine what he's going to do. That Ooh. fair, as we were talking about earlier, is going to steal, seal that stock. That was a really dangerous situation. 
Like, I'm not going to lie to you, that young Link definitely could have had that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a situation where, you know, if his projectile game was right, if he used his fire arrows, the bombs, the boomerangs, those were his best tools. But we see this right now, that crash bomber, all that pressure on his shield are not allowing him. Is either you're taking one or the other. You're taking shield damage or you're taking the damage from the crash bomb. He got the crash bomb and was ready for it, got that fair. That was calculated play from the Mega Man. It was very well played from the Mega Man. However, I feel like Crash Bomb, while traditionally not that strong of a tool, it's finding so much use in this match because I don't think these players are aware of like the timing it takes for the bomb to explode and then the proper ways to avoid it. So like besides just taking the shield hit like you mentioned or just taking the hit and that ending up being some sort of confirm like we just saw at the end of game two, you could spot dodge it, you could roll, you could try to pass it back to Mega Man. It does have that proximity effect to have connecting to another player. Right. And all of these are options that are available for you to just try to get away from that situation. You can even take advantage of that hit itself. You go really close to Mega Man, you force him to be in the blast radius. All of a sudden, you're not, the Mega Man's not able to punish you for getting hit by it. Yeah, and I mean, that's even in a situation, which would you have rather taken? Um, shield damage and just hit the crash bomber on shield or uh, Peach Kirby rocking out in the background? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what the cosplay is, but you know what? Live your best life. But would you rather take the damage on shield or would you rather take the punishment after? I mean, even in worst case scenario, you got to grab. That's more optimal against a Mega Man than getting hit by any of his air, uh, standard attacks. Oh, absolutely. Nonetheless, so we're going into that game three. See what it's going to take us. Pichu's returning, however. We have another change of the guard. This time, Young Link's taking the bench for Dr. Mario as game three brings us to Yoshi's story. I'm not sure how I feel about this. That's a very interesting swap. Um, a character that is slower hits a lot harder, but now loses that mid-range situation. I think Pichu, as we see right now, is just going to abuse a character as slow and heavy like Dr. Mario. Yeah, Doc trades out his ability to play off stage for tons of kill power. So we'll see how well that comes into play. Typically speaking in dubs, all that kill power has a right place at home. But if he's going to be dying just as early, I don't know if this is the switch. Yeah, that was about 25 seconds that stock lasted. I'm not sure what he was thinking with this one. I can tell you just from knowing the character or how he plays, might have not have been an optimal play, but you know what? With heavy swings like that, That's what, what we're can trying you to do? See. Yo, take this medical receipt. You were not ready. Man's got no coverage, catching quick duffs, and this is a smaller stage. The blast zones are very tight in on the stage. Yeah, so, man, I hate the stage. Like, Story's a great one if you just want to slug it out. No, and no, no, screw those ledges. Listen, man, those ledges are going to allow characters with rougher recoveries to come back. Those ledges is what kills my Yoshi. I have a personal, yeah, right? I have a personal bias against this stage. Screw this stage. Anyway, <laughs> um, we have this Pichu once again going way off, actually connecting the Thunder off ledge, allowing him to not only secure the KO against the Rob, but survive Ooh. for himself. The down smash also KO into Dr. Mario. And just gameplay-wise, this entire thing is swapped around. This is all blue team. Yeah, all the momentum swung itself over to Mega Man and Pichu. And at this point, I feel like they're taking more advantage of the stage than Red Team is, regardless of the fact that they picked into it. Like, Blue Team's been doing a really good job of edge guarding. They've been doing a really good job of confirming their kills. Ooh. This entire battle's almost taken place entirely at the ledge or off stage. Two places that Rob and Doc do not want to be, like, at all. And the craziest part is that Blue Team is using the aerial option to just punish them. I'm not sure what that Mario is there. Just, he just reflected four times, that weird behind cape. Um, I, I mean, that's not going to bring home the gold any faster, my dude. That quick duff though on the Mega Man, still a pretty heavy character, not able to come back. No, wait, Mega Man can wall jump? Yes, what? he can. He's got a really good wall jump. And in conjunction with a Pichu trying to help him out, that would have been a good recovery, but instead the Rob gets in the mix, takes complete advantage of the situation, and brings us right back to a dead even game, even sitting a little bit in Red Team's favor, as once again, the Rob recognizes it's kind of hitting the fan at this point, so I got to back up, take more advantage of being able to push people out. He's holding on to that second to last stock. It's a great reserve stock in case that Doc wants to get messy, but still, percentages are climbing on both ends. Pressure's on for both teams. And both these players need to watch out on what they're doing. Not just both these players, both of these teams. Blue team needs to... Oh. Oh, they got a pause, but... Not sure who did the pause. Oh, I see what happened. We had a, a KO to a share stock, but the stock is already lost, so... All right, I guess that was what happened. We see a little bit of grimacing from his oh. partner, and that is going to secure that. That is really That's unfortunate. tragic. If you look on the look on his face, even he realized what happened. Oh, he messed no. up. 
And like when he did that, he's like, the there's, there's no more, there's no more stocks, and big that's sad. unfortunate. That, that is, that, that is a big sad. It was like a huge oof. Because uh, like, blue team had it, they, they were they playing really well. Did. And that first stock, I mean, Dr. Mario lost his stock in 25 seconds. But then they played I, it I out feel, so well right out the gate. Absolutely, I think the major play was when they both lost that stock at the same time. It seemed to have jarred them both to a yeah. point where they could not recover, which is weird because they died at the same time. They're on the platform. I'm just whispering, Yo, man, I'm on the platform right now. I'm gonna go up to the left side. We're gonna get them back. Get killed. Like, what happened? Communication is such a big deal when really it comes is. to doubles, especially like as you're starting to climb up to like where the competition. Gets it's really heated. Like being able to tell your team like what you want to do, what you want to get away with is super big. So like